red flags you shouldn't ignore in any relationship that you are engaged in. This is very important. And this is the conclusion of our soulmate uh, uh, edition of a series. To navigate you on uh, this uh, informative session is uh, Kareem Ainsley, the wife lifestyle strategist, courtesy of Wife on the Channel. Now, let us get into the meat of the matter, the matter of the meat that you came here to devour. Three red flags that you shouldn't ignore, especially as a woman. I don't want you to say that I did not know because you knew. Now, number one, his words doesn't match his action. If someone says that they're going to do something and they don't do what they say that they're going to do, at the young stage of your relationship, then that there is a red flag that should be waving. You don't really want justification. You don't really want an explanation. You should just be uh, taking it under observation. And then if it continues, then that there would not only be a one-off situation, it would be a repetitive situation in which it is a current, common occurrence. So this may be embedded in this individual's design. So you cannot expect to see this, no, and then in the future in a relationship with them, you expect them to stick by what they say that they will do. So that is number one red flag. Number two, the relationship pushes you to compromise. Yes, I know that you want to please uh, the person that you're in a relationship with, but there are some things which are sacred, some things which you cannot compromise on your values. Certain exits should remain exits, certain entries should remain entries. And not only that, uh, certain places, uh, the individual may not be qualified yet to go. Remember, if this person is not your husband, there are certain things that you cannot be doing with the person. You cannot be getting too emotionally involved. You're going to have a conversation. You're going to be reasoning together. You can't be getting too physically or intimately involved. You can't be fantasizing with this individual. You have to just uh, be in a state where you are protecting that which you have been given charge over in this uh, season. And remember, you are valuable. You are important. You don't need someone to validate you. You don't need to be someone who is the tryout uh, machine for the, the community, the tryout machine for the club. You don't need to be that individual. Number three, you see other flags that uh, are questionable and you pray about it, and then guess what? God gave you the answer. So God answers your prayer to show you that he is not the one. Yes, yes, yes. You're saying, why would God answer? The you asked God to show you the sign, and he showed you that this person is not the one for you. He showed you that this person is the one that is going to destroy your life. He showed you that there is incompatibility. But you allow your emotional overwhelming to cloud your mental faculties and then you engage in a relationship which is to your detriment. There, there, there. That there is something that you have to avoid. You have to be in relationship only that are authorized because you don't want your life to become a calamity. And it's a matter of the heart. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. So don't allow your, your heart to, to misrepresent your heart. And we'll get deeper into what we're saying in this moment. You know that uh, when we engage in a relationship, the relationship that we are engaging in is one that is preparing us to transition into marriage. We're not just going to go to the edge of the precipice because uh, this uh, situation that we are presenting and we are projecting to you is not to take it to a precipice where you fall off in uh, disorder, you fall off in uh, deception, you fall off in divorce at the end. That is not what we are setting up for. We are setting you up to go on the road so that you are positioned for success. So marriages does not make us complete nor does our spouse make us complete. And that is something that I want you to take seriously. 
you have to be complete before you get married. You cannot take yourself incomplete into a marriage relationship and then expect to be fulfilled. That is not how it works. While Plato says we must find our other half to be complete, the Bible does not tell us to find another half. But what the Bible says is that we should be complete in Christ. Yes, complete in him, which means that we should have a saving relationship with Christ because we are representative of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And if you are fulfilling that capacity, it then means that you are positioned for success. While the world pushes us to believe in love at first sight, the Bible reminds us love is a commitment that endures the test of time. Love at first sight could be lost. Love at first sight, according to what the world presents, could be infatuation. There is no such thing as love at first sight that is long lasting according to the world's standard. Because the truth be told, the world does not even have a clue as to the definition, the meaning, the significant the ramification of love. Because if you love me, keep my commandments. How many persons in the world are really keeping the commandments of God? How many persons in the world who claim to profess love are being honorable, are being dignified, are not misrepresenting their portfolio. How many persons truly express love? Quite a few people really express love, especially in the public circle. Even your favorite actors and actresses who say that they are in love, the way they represent themselves would prove that they don't even understand the concept of love. Yes, they may have all the fancy houses. Yes, they may have all the money. Yes, they may have all the girls. Yes, they may have all the, the men. Whatever it is that they have, they want. But are they truly fulfilled? Are they truly satisfied? And that is where love comes into play. So we have to understand that love is a commitment. A lot of them tell you and sing their song about uh, infidelity and all this kind of stuff. And they're, they're, they're guiding your minds to things which are unrighteous. And we're buying into it. We need to stop buying into it. If you are associated with, with artists which are telling you things which are ungodly, telling you things which are not representative of the truth, telling you about shacking up and jacking up and all these kind of stuff, you have to be very careful. Because these things, they may seem to be on the surface, but they infiltrate our vessel. But let us get back to the soulmate concept. Uh, so some ideas that the soulmate uh, concept presents to us are that uh, we don't want uh, to entertain. And uh, the reason why it is so dangerous is that sometimes the idea of soulmate confuses and delay a single person from committing to marriage. Yes. So this person is in a relationship, a relationship that is right for them, a relationship that is satisfying their, their needs in the moment, but they want to stay on the border so they can look out to find something else. Sometimes the idea of soulmate provides an excuse for someone who is married to seek a divorce. We are not having the chemistry. Things are not as they used to be. Yes, you have grown, you have matured, you are now operating at different dynamics, so you just have to adjust and adapt in your relationship. So yes, uh, the soulmate theory is dangerous in that regard. Both views are flawed. Marriage is designed as a lifelong commitment, a lifelong covenant. So it is wise not to enter into it lightly. If you enter into marriage lightly, that can be a calamity. That can be the end of you. Looking for someone who will complete you or be a perfect fit is largely fruitless. I don't want you to have a fruitless marriage. I want you to have a fruitful marriage. No human being is meant to complete another human being. That each human being has to be complete in and of themselves under the authority of their creator. Remember, they have to submit to God so that they can have uh, the guidance, the knowledge, the direction that they need in order to survive and sustain life as intended. Only God can meet our deepest needs 
and, seek, and speak uh, to the most uh, vacuous uh, spaces in our heart. A spouse should certainly complement us and be a good fit for us, but the spouse cannot in any shape or form complete us. Now that you know what the soulmate uh, theory entails, it is uh, something that uh, you would need to consider as you explore your relationship. And I want you to also consider to yourself, is this something that you want to entertain in your life? Is this right for you? Does this uh, guide you to a path of righteousness? Today, as we conclude, I submit to you to make God Lord of all, or inadvertently you will choose for him not to be Lord at all. Thank you for spending some quality time with us here on Wife Only as we explored in parts the conclusion of the soulmate theory, the soulmate concept, the misconceptions associated with the soulmate. Now that you have this information, you have been informed, you have been edified, you have been elevated, and now it's time for you to enact that which you have garnered. It is a hope that your life will be better and not bitter. Signing out from Wife Only is Kareem Ainsley, the Wife Lifestyle Strategist. Until we meet again, be the wife that you were meant to be. Be blessed and share your blessings with others so that they may be informed, they may be edified, they may be illuminated, they may be empowered and emancipated as they move on to impact the world. See you in our next session as we speak on the caption of marriage.